who Thomas Kincaid is. And he's hated by fine artists everywhere. But he's also like a terrible person. He's an asshole, you know? He was a bad alcoholic. I think he died of like liver cancer or something like that. But he was also just like awful things in public. Look him up, it's like all on the Wikipedia. But I've been really inspired by him lately for some reason. Um, landscapes. And he's just like the most obvious of all the landscape artists. He's known as the painter of light. Um, yeah, the painter of light. That's like, now you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, like little like, like gnome villages and homes over in these like picturesque creeks and, you know, like, like deciduous trees and moss on everything. He's really awesome. and. So I've been writing all these songs with my friends lately in the Thomas P.K. style, and you can check them out on music.motherrussiaindustries.com. But today I was on the bus and I thought, I never get a chance to talk to anybody, you know? Because for like 20 years now, I've been writing songs in an instrumental style, and I love the people that sing, you know, all the singer-songwriters of the world, they're my favorite. That's what I listen to, I don't listen to. I mean, that's not true, that's not so much music, but those are the guys that, like, get me nostalgic, you know, and, and, and the ladies, too, you know, all the different, all the different singer-songwriters, so it's like, well, tonight I'm going to talk, and so bear with me for a second as I figure out what I want to talk about. It's not Thomas B.K., I don't want to talk about him at all. Did you guys know I've been studying bugs? Yeah, bioacoustic insect communication is what the science in the field is called, which means that in every biologic process, there's some kind of acoustic process that's also going on. Usually it's in the microsonic range, so very short sounds, but it's also ultrasonic, which means it's too high for us to hear. It's out of our human hearing range, or it's too low. It's below 20 hertz, and uh, that is supersonic sound. But most bugs speak through... Um, those ultrasonic sounds. So, for example, um, cicadas. Yeah. I hit the right button. <laughs> yeah, that's the scissor cutter. It's like a suburban, suburban cicada. They look green, usually at the bottoms of the trees. The only ones that speak are the males. They uh, use these two tambal glands in their chest. Um, that are made of these striated uh, uh, teeth. And when one pushes out, the other pulls in and it moves at about a thousand times per second. So really, even though we're hearing all those sounds that are like, you know, ultra high frequency and really, really frustrating. Ah, turn that off. Um, there's also sounds that we can't hear that are way out of our human hearing range. The one that, that's the magic cicada. It's the 17 year, 21 year cicada. They were here in 2014. Um, and they're really awful, but beautiful too. Um, somebody once told me that cicadas live in this uh, cycle of prime numbers. So 3, 5, 7, 4, 6, 13, 20. But I'm not good with, with, with the math. And anyways, that it's in the cycle against a predator that has followed it for like a thousand years. And so the ones that are the oldest are the ones that get deepest into the earth. And so in the early summer, they hatch their eggs and they start crawling towards the surface. And when they get to the surface in the early summer, then they hop up on the nearest tree and they start singing these songs.
Stoneflies. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen stoneflies. They live in the riverbeds of forests, usually. Um, their life cycle is three part. They start in the egg and larva, and then they hatch and just sort of follow the stream. And trout might eat them. They bump against rocks and eventually find themselves to the actual like rock bed of the river. Um, that's a thing. And when they get there, that's when they enter their nymph phase of life. And sometimes they can live three years eating and also being eaten um, and just waiting until they're ready for their adult phase. And all kinds of different stoneflies all over the world. These things are, are prehistoric. They're usually about this long. They have four wings, kind of like lace wings, but even more transparent. And uh, when they grow those wings, they hop onto the nearest rock. Keep in mind that these things don't have mouths. They don't even eat. They have one purpose, which is to find a mate. And the males do this, and they use what are called lex, which is just like a chorus of male callers looking for a, looking for a lady. And they all hop up onto the rock, sometimes the trunk of a tree, and they start to drum their abdomen against the trunk of the tree. Like that. Crickets. 
That's actually a KD did. Um, no, Acris D day. That's a common short horned grasshopper. It rubs its leg against its forewing and it does it quick. Um, most of these kinds of bugs, uh, stridulators are what they're known as because they rub one body part against another body part to be able to create that sound. So anyways, Acridine, that's the, that first one, little white noise one. Next one is cricket, common field cricket. A much shorter strokes. It's also like the Plecoptera moves in either monophasic or diphasic patterns, which is common in all types of bioacoustic communication. They measure everything in these. Uh, there's a hit, which is either da or da da, and between that, they have what is called a silent interphase gap. And so after that happens, then you start to create patterns, and where the longest silent interphase gaps are, and it's usually consistent when these crickets are singing, that's known as a sentence. So, you know, it's like almost speaking. It's really crazy. These were the ones that charmed me first, and I was like, oh my god, they're so, they're so awesome. They just keep singing and keep singing and keep singing all the time. The males burrow, sometimes they burrow in a leaf on a tree, but most of them in the ground. Um, and then the other one is the katydid, and it's the treetop katydids. It's wing against leg, and they do it in what is called uh, inner it's a it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a interphase gap too, but it, what happens is the the first male starts to rub its wing against its leg, and then the one next to it hears that, and then waits till it stops, and then it does it. So when you hear thousands of them doing it, it creates this big wash of sound. It, you know, sometimes it's thousands, sometimes it's just a few, but they're loud.